Over the years, I've owned many binoculars, everything from inexpensive Walmarts like this to 100 millimeter monsters like this one. As much as I enjoyed the three-dimensional images and the reality and the comfort of using two eyes at once, they all suffered from the same problem. Image shake, caused by the fact that the binoculars not only magnify the image, they also magnify the tiny motions your hands make when you're holding the binoculars. Mounting the binoculars on a tripod can help, but that makes moving to other objects awkward. A better solution is to step up to one of the new image stabilized binoculars, such as these Canon 10x42 LIS WP binoculars. They cost as much as a battleship, but they work pretty good. This review will explain how good they work and some of the problems that I experienced with this pair. The 10 by 42 stands for 10 power with a 42 millimeter diameter main objective. The L and red ring is Canon's designation for their professional or very best quality lenses. IS is for image stabilization. WP stands for waterproof. These are supposed to be completely waterproof. And finally, the 6.5 means that they have a 6.5 degree field of view. Functionally, this is the focuser. And this button is what turns on and off the image stabilization function. Let's take them outside and see how good the image stabilization works. Here we are again with no image stabilization. That click is the sound of the image stabilization being turned on. When you're looking through the binoculars, the amount of stabilization is even greater than this video is capturing. Please don't judge the quality of the image these binoculars produce by this video. The camera I'm using is about the size of a box of Tic Tacs and isn't doing a very good job of capturing how, just how sharp this image is. Let's go back inside for an in-depth discussion of the pros and cons of these binoculars. Since these are the only image stabilized binoculars I've ever used, I can't say if the Canon system is better or worse than anyone else's. What I can say is compared to regular non-stabilized binoculars, these things are fantastic. Besides eliminating the jitter, the stable image also allows you to get a really good focus on both eyepieces so you can see a lot more detail. What's the difference? Instead of merely spotting or looking at a bird, you can now study it with enough detail to tell not just what type of bird it is, but one bird of a particular species from another bird of the same species. It's fantastic. Optically, these produce the sharpest, clearest, highest contrast images of any binocular or even any of the telescopes that I've owned. These are just great. Although the objectives are too small for serious astronomy, the image stabilization, the sharpness of the images, and the wide field of view make them fun for casual observing. When looking at very bright stars like Cirrus, what I found is a slight astigmatism as I rack the focus in and out. However, this was easily half of uh, the very best binocular other than these that I've ever used. Star images stayed sharp right to the edge of the field of view and I didn't notice any color or flaring and the moon looks absolutely unbelievable. I've read all 107 reviews of these binoculars on Amazon and the most common complaint, and it's a justifiable one, is that the lens caps are almost impossible to get on and if you do, they pop off if you look at them. Another complaint is that the front element isn't recessed into the frame very much, so it's easily touched and fingerprinted. Fortunately, both of these problems are easily solved. The solution was to get a pair of 52 millimeter lens hoods and screw them into the front element, and then a pair of 58 millimeter lens caps. Now I have a nice lens hood that provides enough protection for the lens so that if I touch it like that, it's not going to get any fingerprints. And this also provides increased contrast because it'll block stray light from getting into the optical train. 
kind of makes them look sexy too, I think. One drawback to this solution is that the binoculars no longer fit in the carry case, which is unfortunate because it's really a pretty nice case. The eyepiece lens caps aren't great, but they do go on easier and stay on more reliably than the front ones do. So I'll be keeping this as is. Still another complaint is that they're not very comfortable to hold, and I agree with this. With regular binoculars, you can wrap your hand, especially your thumb, all the way around, and you've got a good firm grip. With these, the way they're designed, you can't close your thumb. You, you can't wrap it around, so you don't have as good a grip. And what I find is, after uh, 15, 20 minutes of use, my thumb gets very sore just from holding them. You have to be careful to use both hands and let the left hand take some of the load. Another issue with these is that I find I'm very nervous walking around with them. It, regular binoculars cost a couple hundred dollars. If you're uh, carrying them around and they, they fall, I mean, it's, it's not good, uh, but you haven't lost an arm and a leg. With these things at 13 to maybe as much as $1,600, just carrying them by your side is a, a little bit nerve wracking. And uh, that's a problem for me because I don't like neck straps. Another complaint is that the focuser is very slow. Whereas most binoculars will go from the close focus to infinity with just one motion like that, this can take about seven. Now, that can be a problem if you're trying to follow something that's moving around a lot. On the other hand, this allows you to zero in on a really sharp focus. So for me, this isn't such a bad deal. Several people complained that the button for the image stabilization is hard to find. I didn't find that to be the case because there's a protective little ridge right here that even if you can't feel around for the button, you find that and you know the button's right there. Several people complained that the neck strap provided with these binoculars was way too flimsy. But this nylon strapping could probably hold 300 pounds, so I think it can handle the two and a half that these things weigh. I think this is an upgrade from the original strap, which may have been too thin. Weighing two and a half pounds, these are about a pound heavier than non-image stabilized binoculars of the same aperture diameter. That's not a big deal for me because I don't go out and view for hours at a time. However, for serious birders who walk great distances to get where they want to do their viewing or who do spend a half an hour at a time standing and holding these things, that might be an issue. A few people have commented that the image stabilization system causes the focus to shift ever so slightly, but every two seconds. Now, I've looked for this, studied for it, and I think I've seen it, but it is so small, so minor, that it borders on the edge of imagination. And this isn't going to be a problem for me. The binoculars come with a standard three-year limited guarantee, which a lot of people complain about as being too short. but Three years? That sounds pretty good to me. One thing to be aware of, though, is that after that guarantee runs out, if you do send these to Canon for repair, it's going to be hideously expensive. Uh, lots of times it can run five, six hundred dollars. Now, the limited guarantee says that if you have anyone but an authorized Canon repairman work on these, it completely voids the guarantee, which sounds standard, but actually, the federal government just recently ruled that's illegal, that any qualified repairman can open this thing up, do repairs on it, and that will not legally void the guarantee. One person complained that the unarmored, that is unrubberized areas, the anodized finish would wear off fairly quickly. But then I looked at the dates of those and that review was uh, after 10 years so if the finish lasts 10 years, that sounds pretty good to me. A similar complaint is about the rubberized armoring. And this applies not just to this particular binocular, to, but to all of the Canon rubberized binoculars. A lot of people say that after five or six years, this stuff turns gummy. Now, it could be 
environment. That if they are living in some place that is very humid and very hot, uh, that that humidity and heat will in time break this material down. There was one review that claimed that the diopter adjustment didn't hold. I haven't found that to be the case. You pull it back, make your adjustments, push it forward, and it locks back in place and it holds just great. The final and most serious problem with these binoculars, other than their expense, may sound trivial, but I found it to be a real problem. And that is that the eye cups have a very sharp edge. And because of the low eye relief, which is 16 millimeters, you pretty much have to press your nose up against these things to get close enough to get the whole field of view. This hurts. These are sharp, and although they're rubber, to the skin on your nose, they feel very sharp, and this gets annoying and actually painful after a while. Now these come off, but then you're left with even sharper metal rings here, which are even more annoying. I haven't figured out a fix to this, and this is gonna be one of the things I work on very hard over the next couple of months, to find something that is more comfortable than these really badly designed eye cups. So enough with the complaints. Let's have some fun with these things. Canon makes a number of claims about field of view, objective diameter, magnification, and the quality of the internal optics. Let's put some of these things under the microscope and see if what Canon says is what you really get. With the exception of eye relief, all of the numbers came out actually better than I had hoped for. The problem with any eye relief, less than 15 millimeters, is that anyone who has to wear glasses is going to find they're so far away from the eyepiece that their field of view is going to be reduced. It's going to look shadow, shadowy around the edges. When I put on my reading glasses, which I don't need, but just for the experiment, I tried it, I found that my field of view was cut down almost by half. I don't know if that's a problem with my particular pair of binoculars or if that's a design problem with all of them. Accepting that, the rest of the numbers look great. I'm especially happy with the close focus distance being less than the claimed 8.2 feet. I found I could get within seven and a half feet and still get a good focus. At that range and with 10 power, they're practically like a microscope. Most binoculars and even a number of telescopes have aperture stops which reduce the actual clear aperture to something less than the maximum diameter of the main objective. And they do this because it eliminates some of the optical defects that are more common to the outer reaches of the main objective. I was really surprised and pleased to discover that the actual clear aperture was larger than what was claimed. I measured the actual aperture using two different techniques and taking multiple readings at each technique. So I have high confidence that this is a good number. I've been trying to think of an analogy to explain to people who've never used an image stabilized binocular with really good optics, just how much of an impact these make on your viewing. And I came up with this. Think back to the time when we had those little square CRT televisions that were low resolution. And then think about when you went from one of those to one of the large screen, widescreen, high definition sets. The impact is amazing. And that's what these things do. It's just like that. It's just when you look through these for the first time and you're not used to image stabilization, you just kind of lose yourself in the wonder of just how sharp and how stable the images are. And I think it's great. Now for my final review. Is this worth $1,200, $1,300, maybe $1,600? Honestly, no. I'm not going to get that much value out of it, but I am going to keep them. I love them. I love the images. I love the image stabilization, but I think they're overpriced. I suspect if I got one of the Canon non-L, that is non-professional lens binoculars that had image stabilization, which run four, five, six hundred dollars at, at a similar size, uh, that uh, they would probably work pretty close to how these do. So um, 
If I had to do it over again, I'd probably go with one of those lesser expensive. But I've got these now and uh, I'm really happy with the performance. And I hope that if you've watched this video, if you're thinking about buying one of these, that the video's given you some criterion to decide for yourself if you think this is a good purchase. As always, I hope you'll visit my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. And of course, thanks for watching.